Hi everyone, it's Sue again. Um, I thought I would just turn the camera on. I've just been having a little bit of a fiddle around with my slow stitched um, journal covers. Um, I've lost my way a little bit with um, with this to be quite honest because I think it's like for me it's just really busy. I do love it and there's you know all these different elements and textures throughout. Um, so I've actually just had to put it aside for a bit and come back. So I thought today I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at it. I'm so close to finishing it. Um, so I've got a couple of blank spots here of um, wadding that are showing that I need to do. I've got some some fabrics that still don't have stitches on them. Um, so I've just I th what I thought I'd do is I just show you I've found a few bits and pieces at um, some op shops. Um, not necessarily for this journal cover, but just um, few, some things that we might be able to use in some future covers. Um, I'm a little bit like a bowerbird now. I've been going through drawers. I'm trying to still get my studio, my workshop um, all organised and I'm finding all this amazing stuff that probably I wouldn't have used inside my journals, but I can actually do them on some slow stitching. So I've found these beautiful... Um, buttons there they've got a real different shape to them um, you know they I won't use them on this one I don't think but I'll put them in my little slow stitching bag and um, they can be used on things I was at our spotlight the other day and I just thought well because I like the more neutral and even with this this is really becoming quite busy just putting some plain colors in might sort of break it down a bit so I found these shell discs in different sizes um, so I thought they might be nice on there as well um, some rectangle I think they're for bags meant to be for bags but I just thought that's just another different size and shape element that you could use on them and they came in rings as well so I thought they were really nice you know you could do a stitch you could even crochet um, around that and then stitch them to your, your journal cover. Um, so I've got some of those. Um, I had these in in the drawer. They're, um, they're split rings, but there's no reason why they couldn't be stitched on there. So, And I'm not sure last time whether I had actually stitched this on. I think I may have um, in the last video. These are little... Um, toggles for your jewelry so that to close so all I've done is I've used the circular part of the toggle I'll just show you so they come as a pair you've probably seen them on um, different jewelry you need to get little container or clip seal bags for all these because I know what's going to happen they're going to end up everywhere um, so that yeah, obviously slips in there and toggles, keeps the, the bracelet on. On your arm. Anyway, you get the you get the idea. So I've just used this circular bit here as if it's a swing in the the bird cage there. Let me pick it up and show you. So so it just gives it another um Another bit of texture, so I've added that. Um, I've added some beads. Now, didn't think I loved them. I was really quite disappointed, and that's when I put it away. I just thought, no, you're trying too hard. But when I come back, I don't mind it. Actually, it's it's tactile and it's it's bringing all the colours in. So what I'll do though to sort of balance it up, I'll do another just another little cluster of um, those beads somewhere on the back side of the journal. So one thing that um, I've got to keep in mind though is not having anything too hard or bulky around the edge because I'll be making this into a journal and I'll zigzag around the edge and um, you know zigzag whatever I put on the inside cover as well. So I, I've just got to be aware and not put anything too bulky on the edges there. So um, I also found um, just some seed beads because I only had one bag of beads and I don't even know where they are it's when I was make when I was putting these on I'm hoping I've still got some of the bag um, 
tipped up and the these little beads went everywhere all over the lounge room all in the in the couch and everything so um it was a little bit of a nightmare but um hopefully i can find the bag for those and i'll so that i can repeat that over here but i thought these colors would go nicely with this anyway these fabrics tim holtz fabrics because i've got still got um you know these other covers that i want to do as well so yeah i've just picked up a few bags of beads so there's so much that you can can do to them so um on oh, these gold ones there as well i have also been making sitting there making um suffolk puffs which has been really relaxing um as i said these i don't i don't think i'll be putting these on this particular journal cover but i've got so much tim holtz fabric i'll either use these throughout journals or they'll go, can go on these other covers anyway so i've been doing that as well um, what else have I been doing? I had somebody um, that wanted to know how to do the hexes. Now, I did actually find some of these um, six-pointed stars in my um, happy basket. Excuse me, second. <coughs> um, and, yeah, they're really fiddly. I'll, I've got to play around with them. I don't know whether I'll incorporate that shape yet. I have cut some out. Um, but I, whether I'll incorporate them, I'm just not 100% sure yet. So what I thought I'd do today is just show you how I do my hexagons. Um, once again, this is my way. That's how I do it. Um, and I'm not sure a friend of mine cut, punched, she had a punch this size. So she punched a heap of hexes out for me. These ones here that are a little bit bigger um i don't even know what size they are i don't have the bag sorry but what i thought i'll do is i might show you on the the bigger size ones today how i do them because these are really fiddly really fiddly um but what i had thought was i'd put um some hexes or something coming down here somehow but we've got to put them together first so I'm just going to quickly show you how I do that um, now I thought also this was some sashing on a, a quilt they ended up unpicking because I didn't particularly like it with the fabric so I'm thinking this sort of goes in with the colors that are in in this cover with all these fabrics so I just thinking that I need some plain something plain to sort of break all that busyness so I'm going to do a hexagon out of this um oh I also found this at the op shop the other day crochet cotton it's pearl eight um I don't think I'll be using that color but some of the other colors I'll use um in some sort of slow stitching so that was the price is eight but I think they gave it to me for six so that'll keep me going for a while um, yeah, another thing that you can also use on them is, you know, this type of thing. If you're doing a journal cover, obviously be careful where you stitch them. You're not going to stitch that there because you won't be able to fold the cover shut. Um, you know, like you could stitch that, say something like that there. I could even just stitch that there if I wanted to rather than do hexagons. So that's, that's an option as well. I just found this little bit of rosette trim laying around so i'll add it to my lace lace bag so yeah there's just so many different things that you can do so i'm just going to pop that there and and look at it for a while and see if i if i like that so what i thought i'd do is i'm just going to show you how i do my hexagons so we might get started with that i also found um some tim holtz of his um his background grunge fabrics now it's a bit too pink i don't think that that will really go so we can eliminate that um i found some of his one of his range as well so i thought um even though it's got writing on there i might use some of this color and it's sort of got that stitching look on it it's got this color here of this thread um maybe as hexagons as well so 
And then I did find this one and it's probably a little bit too, I don't know, it might go actually, to be quite honest. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, that variegated thread there has sort of got those colours in there. So let's, let's do three hexagons out of these colours to start with, okay? Now, I'll show you how I do it. Um, let me just grab some scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop this out of the way because I don't want to cut it. And quite possibly maybe put a, a background down just so that you can see better, see what I'm doing. Okay. So all I do, I'm a lazy um, English paper piecing person if that's such a thing so what I normally do is I just normally work out I'll just cut cross cut squares the size and then I'll have excess in here um, what I'm going to do today is just show you probably the way that it should be done you can get acrylic templates with um, that actually have a quarter of an inch bigger than the paper and you can you know draw on the back of your on the wrong side of your fabric and then cut them all out that way i'm just going to hold my hexagon and doing it this way you probably waste more fabric um, but as i said these were just from a quilt that i unpicked that i wasn't happy with so it's not something that i'm probably necessarily going to use in a quilt so we'll use it um, for this today so all i do is just go around and just a rough quarter of an inch around the hexagon so it's bigger than your piece of paper so you can see there it's bigger than my piece of paper that I'm going to be using so I'm just going to do that with these two other fabrics as well I'm just going to get my paper and I'm just going to add it to there. Now I found this piece in my stash as I was said as I was looking for something else. Um, I'm just going to roughly cut a square and just pop that out of the way so that it's not in screen. Okay, and then same thing, just go around and roughly cut a quarter of an inch bigger than your piece of paper. So you can buy these papers um, already pre-cut from your quilting stores or um, local spotlight. Um, so just check in your area and you can get a multitude of different shapes and sizes. Um, but if you've got punches, um, punch out some heavier weight cardstock. So it needs to be quite firm, not not too thick, but um, you can hear that. And then this is just photocopy paper, so there's a, a big difference. So about double, at least double the weight of photocopy paper. Okay, and now I'm going to, and now this is going to stress, oh, actually, I was going to say it's going to stress a lot of people out because... I might waste a bit, but there's on the selvage part here. This is what I want. I just want this bit here. I don't want all the writing. I just want more of the blue than I want of the writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little square. And as I said, too, I think... In one of my previous videos um, I have used the selvage from some of Tim's fabric so um, don't throw your selvage out you can use that you know you could use dapper as well tailored you could use the numbers so every little bit you can actually upcycle and using your slow stitching so 
I'm just going to quickly do this as well, do this one. I'm just now got an aeroplane going over. Okay, so I'm not, I won't, I'm not going to keep that piece. I'll just throw that piece out. All right, so that's, I mean, that's very rough, as you can see, and that's that's how I do it. It's probably neater than what I would normally do it. So what I have here is a, um, it's a Soline glue pen. I've just got some rubber bands on the end. I have no idea why. Um, it's like a fabric glue. Um, I'm not sure. It's just ignore the mess because I, I use it quite quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a different glue to your paper glue. Could be wrong, um, but the beauty of this is too that it's it's in a small pen like thing, um, so you don't you know don't have to you know fight with that big big tube of glue. So all I do is, um, and I'm going to have to put something a little bit harder underneath that again. Sorry, just bear with me for a second. I'm just going to. Just so that I can press down. So with your glue, um, all I do is I just put, now you don't want to go, you can see here, I've got, you can see a little bit of a white edge. You don't want the glue right to the edge of your, um, your card. So I just put a little bit of glue there and you just finger press your seam over. So on this one, I probably could have added a little bit more seam. I don't normally work with um, hexagons this size, like probably about an inch and a quarter is the smallest that I normally go. So this is a little bit out of my comfort zone as well. Um, but you can see it just gives you that beautiful, neat, straight edge. So you just go around your whole hexagon, try and tuck the corners in. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So you're just finger pressing that over to give yourself a nice, clean, crisp edge. Okay. So go all the way around. And that one's got hardly any, any seam. So you're just going to finger press it down. So this, this does dry, it, um, but it's easy to remove as well. Okay. So, and I couldn't have done that if I tried. I've pretty much got that in the center. Um, so it gives you a nice crisp finish there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, pause the camera and I'm just going to do those so that you don't have to painfully watch me do that. I'll just do... Just show you again. So just glue, don't glue right to the edge and finger press over. Okay. So I think you get the idea. So what I'll do is I will just pause the camera and I'll just do this um, and I'll be right back. Won't be long. Okay, I'm back. So I decided I wanted to bring in um, some old white sheeting that I've coffee dyed as well because I didn't particularly want like all blue blue on blue if that makes sense so um so I've done another hexagon there as well okay so all we need to do now and I'm just going to grab um a thimble pad which I like to use these I struggle with the thimble so I just use these and I know that's pretty much where I push with the needle one thing that I have found that I've needed um, with these journal covers is uh, pliers to pull because there's so many different thicknesses and I can't I have arthritis in my fingers um, I really struggle to pull it through so pliers are always really good to have so you can just pull it through grab the needle I know there are actual um, needle grabbers or whatever you call them um, to help you do that but I've just got these anyway I just find them easy just to grab those and use those 
So we're going to sew these together and I'm just going to quickly show you how I do that. So I just use, and I keep saying sew, I'm sorry. <laughs> I realize I'm doing it. I think it's a nervous thing. This was in, this is gray thread. It was already threaded in that needle and all it is, it's a Mettler quilting waxed um, thread. It's a poly cotton blend which is fine with me. Um, yeah, it's wax, so it glides a little bit easier. What you do is you line up two of your edges. Now I just need to, do you want me in closer? And I always get this wrong. Um, just see if I can, sorry about this, I'll move so I don't get have full access to my phone. Oh, I don't know what's that, what that is, Mum. Sorry, guys. Sorry about this. Okay, so we're going a little bit closer just so that you can see. That's what I was trying to do. Okay. What you need to do is you're going to find... Um, one of the corners this is really hard trying to make sure I get it on camera and so that I can see as well and you're going to just start at the corner I've put a, a small knot in in my cotton and you just pull it through okay as I said this is sorry I'm just trying to see um, I always, and once again, I don't know whether this is the right thing to do. I always start with tying it off with a knot. I'm just worried that it's going to, to come undone. Okay, so I'm just going to sit down again now and hopefully I am in screen. And all you do, you're just doing a little whip stitch across you don't have to have them really close together but all you're wanting to do is just grab a thread of each fabric you don't want to go through the paper and that's what you're doing you're just doing a little whip stitch all the way and don't let that get caught on that beautiful knot that I've done there You just want to do that all the way along that edge. So you can see I'm not going through a lot of the fabric. I'm just grabbing a thread of the fabric. I probably could do them a little bit closer together than that. But you don't want them really close. So hopefully you can see. Make sure I move forward what I'm doing there. And you can just see that thread, just grabbing each piece of fabric and just stitching them together. So you do that all the way along until you get to the other corner. And self-taught with my sewing, um, like my quilting and that sort of thing. So get a little bit nervous <laughs> I mean I enjoy doing it and I just do things my way so I just get a little bit nervous showing people and all I can say is that this is the way that I do it I'm self-taught works for me makes me happy and I just think that that's the main thing I get the same outcome Because I'm doing it a little bit further away, I'm just struggling to see. That's why I'm taking so long. And I tie that off as well. And so you can see they are now sewn together and you don't see the threads. I use a grey because grey tends to blend with most fabrics. And that's why I'm using grey. So, so that's two sewn together. I'm going to now add this one in. So to do that... What I do, once again, I'm lazy, so I'm going to just pop my thread in this fabric 
and I'm just going to weave it up, up to this corner, up to this corner here and pull it through. Okay, because we're going to add this hexagon and we're going to stitch down this way. So just make sure you line up the corners, make sure all the lines are all, all even. And the same thing, we're just going to start in the corner. Maybe, if, let me just see if I take my glasses off if that, well, no, that's nowhere near better. You're going to catch your corner. And once again, you probably don't have to do this, but I do just tie it off to start. It just gives it a little bit extra strength. And you're just going to go once again a whip stitch all the way along that seam there where the two hexagons are meeting. Once again, you do not want to grab your paper that's in there. I mean, it's just going to the needle's just going to go through it, but it's just. Um, makes the hexagons not the same size. If you're going into the paper, you're going too far into the fabric, if that makes sense. I really hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I am actually struggling to see, to be quite honest. And I'm just gonna come back here because I've got a big, <laughs> really, making this look like it's hard work. So all the way along to the end and you've got this corner again, make sure you get your corner, nice neat corners. Obviously they're a little bit more bulky because that's where you've got the folds and I tie that off again. So you've got those sewn to that point. You've got this bit here that's flapping. So now all you do is you just tip this over. Don't fold that. I mean, if you can, it doesn't matter, but you can reuse the papers and get a couple of um, uses out of them. So you're just going to, so that's what that looks like. Line up your edges again and same thing. Grab your corners and we're going to tie that off. There. And same thing. Whip stitch all the way down. to the next corner. So you can see I had a little, only a little amount of thread threaded in that needle, but it goes a long way. I nearly pulled that out. So you're gonna go right down to the next corner. So your corners together again and just tie that off because we'll be cutting this thread now, okay? And just cut that. So there you have three hexagons sewn together. Where's the cover? So I don't lose my. So what I was thinking, um, I was thinking of putting I don't really know something like that, but just because this is a raw edge here and it's not a full circle. But what I might do is I might um might just add the other blue one here and I'll have a play around with it as to where I place it 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, do you want me to show you that again? I can quickly show you that again if you like. Now I've lost my needle. I knew that had happened. I'm just going to pause and see if I can find my needle. Maybe a second. Okay, I found my needle and I threaded it off camera because it takes me forever. Forever and ever to try and thread. So what we'll do is we're going to add this one to here and I'll just show you. I won't do the whole lot. Um, I'll just show you again very quickly. So line up your corners and your edges. You're going to catch, catch the corner there and tie it off to start. Just to secure it and then whip stitch all the way to the other corner. And once again, don't catch your papers, just catch a tiny little bit of fabric. Okay, so you just do that all the way. All the way to the end. I really hope you can see. How's everyone been? I hope you're all doing really well. Things um, are getting back to our, starting to get back to our new normal here in Australia. Um, borders are still closed. State borders are still closed. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not back to what it was before by any stretch of the imagination, but we certainly are allowed to go out more and you can go and have a coffee. I actually went and had a coffee in a coffee shop the other day, which was really lovely. Um, Jim's daughter and her fiance came up and stayed with us for a night and we went out and had a coffee. Um, we felt very civilized. And then I actually went for a coffee this past Monday as well it was my mum's beautiful mum's birthday so my sister and I took her out for coffee and we sat in a coffee shop as well so it's funny how you you know take things for granted sometimes and you appreciate them a little bit more I think when you when you're able to do them again so it was really nice uh, James and I would like to maybe one night go out for dinner so we'll we'll wait a little bit long. It's freezing. Well, actually, it's a lie. Today is beautiful. I've got a summer dress on today. <laughs> um, summer dress on, but slippers on my feet because it's it's a little bit cool, but it's not not too much. But if you go out in the sun, it is just absolutely stunning. You could sit out in the sun in your summer dress and be comfortable. So um, I've just had. A beautiful friend of mine come and stay with us for the past week. It was so good to catch up with her. She's um, an amazing artist and we I taught her how to make a journal. So she's very excited. She's finished her journal and she's decorating it now. She's gone home today. Um, so I'll miss her. She lives on the Sunshine Coast. But it was lovely to have her here. So I've had a week of um, crafting which has been really, like crafting for myself, which has been really, really nice. So I thought I'd get back to business and and um, work on these journal covers. So I've just, I've ended up, because I've been talking, I've ended up finishing sewing that together anyway, and I'm just tying that off in a knot. I'm just going to trim that. And that's what these things here are called, pin cushions to keep, your needles in I've got to remember that <laughs> get used to using it so you can see you have um, a nice set of hexagons there I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more now um, yeah so you have some nice and they're all sewn together nicely as I said now I don't know whether I'm going to actually put put that there I'm going to have a play around with it um, off camera but I just wanted to show you what I would do is I would actually go to the iron and press that now just so that 
I mean, the, the seams are pretty crisp, um, but I would probably go and iron that. I won't do that now. So I'll go to the other side of the room and turn the iron on and wait for it to heat up. But I just wanted to show you, just get your uh, edges crisp. Now, normally when you're doing English paper piecing, you don't ever remove the papers until, so say that was the center and there were hexagons all the way around there, you would then remove that because if you're making it into a quilt, but because we're doing it um, on a slow stitching piece, small piece like this, all you need to do is just peel away your seam from the, the paper. Okay. And your paper just peels out like that. So the glue, if you use the glue, um, it will just peel away. So. If I had have ironed that, those seams would have been so much crisper, but I won't, I'm not going to pull the others out before I iron it, but I just wanted to show you how easy they come out. So I'll, I will go and I will iron those down. And then what you would do is you would um, just whip stitch that onto your project, whatever you're wanting to, to use it on. So I'm going to have a play around with that and, and decide whether I'm actually going to put that there. Um, or what I'm going to do. I do actually quite like that when I when I have a look at it and put that there. So I'm going to have a think about that. But that was just a, um, I just wanted to show you that because I have had a few um, ladies ask me how I do my hexagons. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's how I do mine. There's lots of different ways to do it and that by no means are mine definitely the right way. It's the easiest way for me to do it. Um, I love the glue, love the glue. I used to baste them, um, as you would know from my videos, I don't like basting, so I've just used like a basting glue for all this to, just to be popped down, just a little dob of glue. Um, so I just love, I love this glue for English paper piecing. So I hope that helps um, someone if they're interested in trying, um, giving some hexagons a go for their slow stitching. I will continue with this cover. I might even get started on another one and maybe do a few more stitches and a little play along in another video coming up. So I hope you like what you've seen so far. I'm going to go and try and find my bag of beads that I dropped half all over the floor and had to vacuum up uh, just so that I can make it, you know, balance out over somewhere over here on this side of the, the back side of the journal. Until next time, I hope you get a little bit of crafting time in and please take care everybody and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.